led to an open revolt in the Minnesota Republican Party. And tomorrow, Tony Lazaro is going to appear in federal court on charges of sex trafficking a minor. But who is Tony Lazaro? Where did he come from? And where did his money come from? Tom Lydon with a look at what we know and what we don't know about his background. Tony Lazaro fancied himself an entrepreneur, but his greatest achievement may have been one of self-invention. The 30-year-old posed with a roster of Republican politicians. On social media, he had all the trappings of a player. The red Ferrari, the luxury downtown condo, and trips by private jet. And often, it seemed, with beautiful young women. It looked good to be Tony Lazaro, until it didn't. Last December, the FBI raided his downtown condo, the Ivy, seizing $370,000 in cash, money in 10 foreign currencies, nearly a million dollars in precious metals, and more than a dozen cell phones. Last week, eight months after the initial raid of his condo, federal prosecutors charged Lazaro with six counts of human sex trafficking of a minor. The Fox 9 investigators discovered Lazaro has spent the last decade creating at least eight corporations in marketing, advertising, foreign currency speculation, and political fundraising. But the companies appear to be mostly aspirational, existing on paper or in basic corporate filings. Their mailing address wasn't some fancy executive suite, but rather a UPS post office box in Palos Verdes, California just a few blocks from where Lazaro went to high school in Rolling Hills, a wealthy enclave near Los Angeles. In his LinkedIn page, Lazaro claims he went to Brigham Young University in Idaho, where he studied neuroscience and physics. The first clue, he misspells neuroscience. BYU confirms he attended the university part-time for just two terms in the last year, but was never part of a degree program. But his grandfather and namesake, Anton Joseph Lazaro, who died last May at 100, is a legendary administrator at the University of Southern California, who transformed the school into the sprawling campus it is today and helped coordinate venues for the 1984 Olympics in Los Angeles. But his grandson appears to have been a different kind of dealmaker altogether. One of his businesses, Honest Forex Signals, promised to tell investors how to take advantage of fluctuations in the foreign currency market. But online reviews describe it as nothing more than a scam. Other businesses, like Wolf Private Trading, have only a rudimentary website. Lazaro is also CEO of Gold River Group, its website displaying the words dedication, passion, transparency against a Minneapolis skyline. In reality, it's anything but transparent. It's not even clear what the company actually does. The pitch? We specialize in the securities, family office, energy, and political industries, areas of expertise that have little to do with one another. Most of the telephone numbers to these businesses have been disconnected, but a few still have a voicemail recording of Lazaro. Hey, I'm sorry, Mr. Call. Please either send me a text or an email. I prefer you do not leave a voicemail on this line. If they are not checked routinely. Thank you. At some point a few years ago, Lazaro got into politics, developing a friendship with Minnesota Republican Party Chair Jennifer Carnahan and her husband, Congressman Jim Hagedorn. Lazaro started Big Tent Republicans, a political action committee with the goal of reaching out to minorities, women, and the LGBT community. We formed Big Tent Republicans to save our country. Lazaro even got a glowing profile in the Star Tribune, touting his political acumen. He made appearances on cable news, facilitated, we discovered, by a booker that he paid to promote him as a pundit. Talking head, political rainmaker, financial wunderkind. Tony Lazaro seemed like a jack of all trades. Or was he just a master at being Tony Lazaro? Tom Lydon, Fox 9.